Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about serum chloride, urine chloride. We talked about beta-2 microglobulin as well as methemoglobin. We talked about uric acid in the blood and the urine. We talked about sputum cytology and many other topics. Today, let's talk about urine cortisol. Why do you want to measure this? Because maybe I have Cushing syndrome or maybe I have Addison disease or other diseases. So that's why this test is helpful. What's the normal cortisol in the urine? It should be less than 100 micrograms per day. So this is not a spot urine test. This is a 24 hour urine test. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Let's review some physiology and then after that, let's talk about pathology. When I have too much cortisol, this could be Cushing syndrome. When I have too little, this could be Addison disease. First, the physiology. We have a CEO and general manager underneath, and then we have three employees and three independent contractors. Who's the CEO? Hypothalamus. Who's the manager? Pituitary. Who are the three employees? Thyroid, adrenal cortex, and gonads. Who are the independent contractors that are not influenced by the pituitary parathyroid gland, adrenal medulla, and pancreas? How did the pituitary influence the adrenal cortex? Via ACTH hormone. Adreno corticotropic growth hormone. There is your lovely hypothalamus secreting CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary and tells the anterior pituitary to make adrenocorticotropic hormone. It's the hormone that grows your adrenal cortex. So there you go. ACTH goes to the adrenal cortex and tells the zona fasciculata to make cortisol. Hypothalamus makes CRH, goes to the anterior pituitary to make ACTH, which goes to the adrenal cortex to make cortisol. If you want to learn more about POM check out my video titled why did JFK develop hyperpigmentation and you will find it in a playlist called ever wonder why cortisol comes from the zona fasciculata cortisol is a glucocorticoid why gluco because it raises your blood glucose how does it do that by breaking down glycogen into glucose or by making glucose from new sources i.e non-carbohydrate sources like some amino acids and some fatty acids and what do you call it when you're making glucose from new sources gluconeogenesis creation of glucose from new non-carbohydrate sources cortisol's action is complicated i've discussed it in great detail in my physiology playlist you can download these colorful notes on my website medicosisperfectsnetis.com Next, let's review some diseases. If I have uh, too much mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, this could be Kahn syndrome, which is usually hyperplasia or a tumor in the glomerulosa, which is part of my adrenal cortex. But what if I have uh, too much cortisol being released from the zona fasciculata of the cortex? This is called Cushing syndrome. But what if I have a disease that attacks all three layers, destroying them, leading to decreased secretion of everything here? That will be Addison disease. So here is a patient presenting to us with similar symptoms to Cushing syndrome, but we want to verify. How can we do this? Let's go to the diagnostic workup. First, you start with a 24-hour urine-free cortisol. So ask the patient to collect every single drop of urine throughout an entire day, 24-hour period. We'll send all of that urine to the lab. We expect this to be around 1 to 2 liters of urine. If the cortisol level in her urine is normal and not elevated, she probably does not have Cushing. But if it's abnormal, we gotta order more tests. Next, you can repeat 24-hour urine-free cortisol or we can use a higher dose than the one that you used in the previous step. Instead of one milligrams, you can use two milligram dexamethasone suppression test. If it's normal, then the patient probably does not have Cushing. If it's abnormal, she does have Cushing. Now, where is the Cushing coming from? Where's the problem? Is it a problem in the pituitary secreting too much ACTH? Or is it a problem in the adrenal cortex secreting more cortisol? Or could it be an ectopic tumor or cancer secreting ACTH? like lung cancer, for example. Oh, how do you know where it's coming from? You order more tests. Such as what? Such as measuring ACTH in her blood. If it's low, it means it's coming from the adrenal. 
because if the adrenal cortex is making more cortisol, the pituitary will say, okay, so you do not need my ACTH anymore. You're making enough. You're making more than enough. I'll shut down. So ACTH will be low. However, if ACTH is high, this could be the fault of the pituitary making lots of ACTH to begin with, or it could be an ectopic cancer. When a cancer secretes a hormone, we call this paraneoplastic syndrome. How should I tell the difference between a pituitary issue and cancer? Order the highest 8 milligram dexamethasone suppression test. If it suppresses, it's a pituitary tumor. What do you mean by suppressed? I mean the patient returns back to normal levels. But if cortisol is still high, this is ectopic because cancer does not obey rules. Cancer does not suppress. Quick note, the pituitary tumor will be suppressed with high dexamethasone suppression dose, but it usually does not suppress with the lower dose of the dexamethasone. Can you tell me in the comment sections some examples of tumors that can secrete ACTH? What we just talked about is Cushing syndrome. Do not confuse Cushing syndrome with Cushing reflex or Cushing triad. I have a separate video on this topic on my channel. The Cushing reflex is a very important topic in internal medicine and surgery. So cortisol in the urine, what's the normal? The normal is less than 100 micrograms in a day, 24 hour urine. The standard international unit is nanomole per day. The normal here is below 276. Causes of high cortisol in the urine. Cushing syndrome, of course, could be coming from the adrenal cortex. We call this primary hypercortisolism. Could be coming from the anterior pituitary. In this case, we can call it Cushing disease. Or it could be coming from an ectopic cancer. And this is a paraneoplastic syndrome, such as small cell lung cancer. Or it could be because of stress. Too much stress increases ACTH, which increases cortisol secretion from the adrenal cortex. Or it could be hyperthyroidism. I don't get it. Thyroid hormone is the stove, the oven of your body. It raises the metabolic rate like mad. So you are super, 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 super hyperactive, metabolically speaking. For your body to keep up with all of this craziness, you will need energy. And you get energy from glucose. Who's going to raise your blood sugar? Cortisol. That's why cortisol is going to go up during periods of hyperthyroidism. And if you've watched my biochemistry playlist, especially my videos on metabolism, I've told you that we have two lands, feeding versus fasting, insulin versus all of the others. So glucagon, cortisol, and thyroid hormone and epinephrine are all acting together in the fasting state. So it makes sense that thyroid and cortisol will go up together because they are friends. Both of them are anti-insulin. Next, what are the causes of low cortisol in the urine? Maybe I have Addison disease or maybe I have congenital adrenal hyperplasia where my adrenal gland stopped making cortisol. When cortisol goes down, ACTH goes up. ACTH tries to talk more to the adrenal cortex. ACTH will stimulate the adrenal cortex more. The adrenal cortex will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger hyperplasia, but it still does not secrete cortisol. If you want to learn more about congenital adrenal hyperplasia, please watch my video with this title and you'll find it in my physiology playlist. It's one of the most important topics in medicine and pediatrics, especially the 21 hydroxylase deficiency. Next, what's the opposite of Cushing disease? Hypopituitarism, the pituitary is not making any ACTH. What's the opposite of hyperthyroid? Hypothyroid. Do you want to learn more about insulin, cortisol, the different types of insulin, diabetes, type 1, type 2, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic, non-ketotic syndrome, and others? Download my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. To learn about HAGMA, NAGMA, acidosis, alkalosis, base excess, base deficit, anion gap, a smaller gap, compensation, etc., download my acid-base imbalance course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And to learn about acute respiratory distress syndrome, many arrhythmias, myocardial infarction, strokes, drowning, many toxidromes, please download my emergency medicine high yields course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectsnetis, where medicine makes perfect sense.